Hey guys. Welcome. Shop Foreman Garage. <laughs> oh no. Look what we got here. We got a 2024 CX90. 2024 CX50. 2024 CX30. And got a 2021 CX5. Now, hold on, there is a reason why I got this vehicle over here, that's 2021. Uh, so let's uh, just do a little bit of comparison. Um, if you're seeing this video, I didn't really have any content to put out this uh, week. So I made this video to fill a space, I guess. But there are a couple interesting things that I wanna show you. And I personally do not know a whole lot about these vehicles and the features and stuff they have. I'm not a salesman, okay? And you know, I'm fine with that. I, I, I don't sell vehicles. Uh, as a matter of fact, far from it, okay? So uh, many uh, uh, bad relationships between auto technicians and salesmen. I'll tell you that for sure. But a while back, I was doing a video on uh, replacing a turbocharger in a CX-9. And I had like a little tiny rant, you know, about Mazda innovation, which is, is good, you know. Uh, they do it right, and then they do it wrong. And so <laughs> this is what I'm gonna show you. At first I didn't really understand it. Now I understand uh, kind of why it is, but I'm, I'm still why. So let me show you, and this is exactly why this vehicle is sitting right here. So this is a 21 Mazda CX-5, and I want to show you how to replace the, the cabin air filter. Okay, so this has got to be, uh, I mean, uh, of all the cabin air filters I've ever replaced, I would say that this has got to be the easiest cabin air filter ever. Um, that's uh, at least underneath the dashboard. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's real easy. If you have one of these vehicles, you can replace your cabin filter real easy. It's the, it's the easiest. I'm telling you, it's the easiest. So you got to open the glove box, right? And the customer has all their stuff in here. Here's uh, a owner's manual, but uh, a lot of people, they just throw the junk in there. You know, you got a lot of napkins and glasses, sunglasses and, um, you know, toothpicks and, uh, you know, sometimes candy, candy wrappers and chips and stuff. You know, if you live in Texas, you know, you got knives, guns, you know, uh, stuff like that. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, this is how you do it. It's pretty easy. There's this little thing right here, which, which actually um, makes the thing come down slow and you just pop it off just like that, right? You don't want to push this in there. You don't want to pull it out. Just pop it off like that. And then let me set the camera down if I can get this open. Come on. Let me get the camera down. I'll show you. Okay. It's pretty easy. On each side, you pull this in and that in, right? On both sides. Push this in, push that in, pull the thing down. Once it comes down a certain amount, then you can pull it out. And you don't have to dump any of this junk that's in the... Uh, the glove box it can stay in there you don't have to take it out or anything drop it down reach inside right here pull out the cabin filter and there it is that easy no doors to open or anything like that the cabin filter has its own door just by sliding it in pulling it out and there it is there's your cabin filter put the thing back on you hook up these right here Oops. right here and here you get those in place push it in bring it up pop it in and on this side right here you stick this thing like that and that's it you're done easy easiest cabin air filter ever now 
we're gonna go over to the brand new 2024 CX-50. Let's see how to take that cabin air filter out. Okay, this is the 2024 CX-50. And here is the glove box. You open up the glove box and it opens a different way. It, it's just a door. It doesn't have the whole glove box coming out. It's just a door. And so you can imagine, you know, if uh, there was uh, somebody that had their life in here, which is uh, usually what people do. They put all their junk and stuff in there. And um, uh, it's it. you open the door and it just like comes out, right? So in order to get this cabin air filter out, there is a, a door right here. Okay, right up inside here, right there, right there, right there, and some over here, right there. There's these tabs. And you gotta pull this tab and pull it down. I can't get it down, you know. I, see I can't I can't do it with one hand uh, let me set this down and see if we can see how this works okay so these tabs you actually have to push them right so push it and try and pull this thing down I can barely get my fingernail under there I usually need to use a screwdriver I can kind of get it down a little bit come on and I can hold it down, push my screwdriver in there, hit the next tab, push the screwdriver, hit the next tab, hit the next tab, and then I can finally get this out. And as you can see, if they, the customer has anything on their top shelf, which usually this is packed, all of this has to come out, okay, to get this out. And then you can see the cabin air filter in here. And I gotta grab it from the top, grab it from the bottom, both at the same time. Try and work the thing out. This one's kind of stuck. So I need both my hands. Come on. Why isn't it coming out? I don't know. So why is it so hard? I have to use a screwdriver. You gotta be kidding me. Why is it not coming out? Okay, I mean, I guess you get the point. It's like, what, what did you do, Mazda? Why? I still can't get it out. I gotta stick the screwdriver in there. That's not right. Try and pop the thing off. I've, it's still not coming out. It's still not coming out. Got this tab on the top, tab on the bottom. Pull them both, the thing should pull right out. It's not coming out. Is this typical? No, not really. I mean, usually you, you can grab it one hand. Okay, there it is. I was able to kind of pry on it. So I'm pulling it out and there it is. Finally, I finally got it out. Okay, let's stick it back in. Make sure it's lined up because it ain't gonna wanna go if it ain't straight. Pop that in, get the cover. Make sure that pops in on the bottom. Snap it in on top. And there it is. And then put all of the junk back in. So the reason why it's like this uh, is because there is an airbag. There's a knee bolster airbag in here. Okay, so this can't come out on the bottom. This has to be attached. It's an airbag. Now, the airbag is actually down in here. This just says airbag right there. But there's got to be a better way, really. There has to be a better way. So let's see what the CX-90 has to offer. This is the 2024 CX-90 PHEV. It is a hybrid, plug-in hybrid. So let's see what this one looks like. This is a glove box, open it up. And so it's not too much different than the CX-50. So we don't have a shelf in there. So whatever's in here, you gotta pretty much take it out. It's got these same clips 
up here on top that I can't okay these you pull I can't get it <laughs> okay let me get this camera set down okay so these you pull instead of push and I can barely get my finger now underneath there and kind of hold it down and then I gotta unclip the next one unclip the next one and unclip the next one come on pull this whole thing out and then there's the cabin filter right there it's got the clips on the side each side and then there it is comes out so that's how you replace the cabin filter you have to take all this stuff off actually in uh, the instructions for doing the cabin air filter in the CX-90 they tell you to take this door off I don't know why but um, that's another thing that you would have to go through pulling this out getting these off pulling these up you know yeah that's that's a pain if we don't have to do it why so there's the cabin filter there let me stick the door back in in place and get it in the place that's in pop these in and there it is put the owner's manual back in there done okay now what okay let's look at this right here this has auto magical rear gate it is a plug-in hybrid it comes with this level one charge cable so you can you know you just uh you know yell from the kitchen hey ma you know i'm, I'm taking the disconnecting the the can opener and i'm gonna plug my car in you know so um and what else Th this is three rows of seats you know which is really cool you just grab this thing right here push it forward same thing with this grab this push it forward now we got a lot of room all right got a lot of extras going on there's a the front license plate bracket this is texas that should be put on it's not put on i don't know why We've got a spare tire in there so quite a bit of room in this thing of course when these seats are pushed back up you know there's not a whole lot of room in there we got the plug-in for the hybrid the uh, the plug-in system on this side and on the other side here is of course your gas tank let's get under the hood all right let's see what we got under here this is the PHEV and one thing I love about these vehicles is this right here holds the hood up tired of uh, having the hoods with the with the prop you got to put up uh, sky active PHEV so a little four cylinder in there All right turbocharged four cylinder hybrid vehicle this is what I want to show you right here this is the battery this is where the battery is if you've seen any of my videos you know this is where the battery is they tucked it way up underneath this cow panel in order to get this battery out you have to take this cow panel off um, and you don't have to take the whole thing off it actually splits right here okay but be careful because this right here which has clips all around it can tear so you have to take this off and pull this down it's got uh, some clips here and here and there's a clip over here you got to take this disconnect this um, windshield washer hose and then this will slide down it'll unclip and believe me it ain't easy to get that thing to clip back on <laughs> it ain't easy but you got to get this off to get to this battery this battery uh, is a positive uh, terminal is inside here 
and it has a bracket that goes across that hole that's a hole down but the bracket also holds a bunch of fuses and all kinds of other stuff on top of it and you have to uh, get that off in order to get to the negative battery cable it's way back there okay so why am i telling you this so if you had one of these vehicles, and uh, I'll tell you this, and I'll probably be the only person to tell you this. I'm gonna give you this little bit of advice, you know, this little trick or, or whatever. And actually, you know, if you're gonna mess with something like this, it'll keep you out of trouble. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's easy. Just take the battery off the correct way, okay? But if you're uh, installing a, uh, uh, aftermarket, um, I don't know, uh, what, what would you put, uh, um, audio unit, alarm system, um, a camera, you know, in the windshield or whatever, um, anything that, that's hardwired, uh, most instructions are going to tell you, disconnect the negative battery cable before you do anything. This right here is the negative ground from the battery cable that's going to the body. That's it. And that's what that is do not do not disconnect this cable thinking that i just disconnected the negative battery cable because the negative battery cable won't be disconnected there's still uh cable uh there's still uh things that are hooked up to that negative battery uh, terminal that's in there that are getting the negative terminal but when you disconnect this right here you are disconnecting some of the other things and what's gonna happen, and I guarantee it, <laughs> and ask me how I know. <laughs> uh, what's gonna happen is the system's gonna freak out. It's gonna completely freak out. It's gonna not see certain voltages and, and uh, things from uh, certain modules that should uh, be seeing voltages from. It, and one of them is going to be that shifter, that uh, uh, automatic shifter the uh e shifter you know because it's electronic shift you know is what it is you shift the thing and it doesn't have a cable that goes through the transmission you shift it into a certain gear and it tells the the tcm hey this is the gear i'm in the tcm shifts the gear into whatever gear you're supposed to be you know that's the way it works but that thing freaks out it doesn't know what gear it's in as a matter of fact one thing that that it thinks for sure is that it's not in park okay and this shifter, let me, let me just show you this. So, this shifter right here, and it is in park right now, okay? I know because I shifted it in the park before I, uh, when I parked it. It won't move, okay? I'm pushing the button, I can't move it. It doesn't move at all. So, uh, what's gonna happen is on the dash right here, it is going to tell you shift the vehicle to park to start the vehicle but it's already in park and i can't shift it out of park because the shifter won't move and the vehicle won't start you hit the start button it won't start you can't shift it it says shift it uh, into park and you can't shift it into park it's already in park and it won't start and and i mean and then what now what now what do you do you you're stuck you know, the entire vehicle is frozen. You can't start it, you can't move it, you can't do anything. Um, if you ever get into that situation, then uh, what you may have to do is disconnect the battery to the right way. Take the battery completely out. Disconnect it, leave it disconnected for a while, okay? Then, uh, and in some cases, some cases, you may have to leave it disconnected and sitting where it's sitting for an hour before you connect it back up and then it will finally realize hey i'm in park and you can hit the start button and you can start it you know assuming that you have the key and you get your foot on the brake you know but um yeah it will freak out do not disconnect that cable don't do it pull the uh, whole battery out disconnect the negative cable where the negative cable is um and uh that's uh some bit of information and nobody else is gonna tell you i'll tell you <laughs> ask me how i know um and of course it, it may be sped up a little bit if you have mdars you know because you can go in and you can clear codes um but uh, it probably will set a bunch of codes and you may have uh, chicken engine lights on and uh, a whole bunch of uh, 
front cameras, you know, messed up, uh, you know, uh, front city brake support and smart cruise control, just everything could be flashing, you know, but you could get it going, you could uh, take it somewhere, have it, uh, the codes cleared, um, just don't do it, just, uh, if you're taking the, dis disconnect the negative battery cable, take it out correctly, don't take that little thing off over there, <laughs> so, um, let's look at the CX-50, all right, so the first thing that are one of the things that uh, that Mazda one of their uh, selling points of this vehicle was that it was a bigger vehicle had more room and if you have crossbars up here you can reach up here and you can put stuff up here it's it's lower to the ground unlike the CX-90, which, uh, you know, on my tiptoes, I can't reach as far across as I can on the CX-50. That was one of their, their big selling points. It's a bigger vehicle, has more room, and um, it, yet it's uh, still short. It's, in, it's not much taller than this uh, CX-30, where, of course, the CX-30, I can reach all the way to the center. Uh, but that was one of their selling points. And... It's uh, it's kind of uh, taken up. Uh, well, of course, you know this is all my opinion. You know, I ain't no expert. You know, I don't sell these vehicles, but I mean, look at this front end. It's just it, it, comp it looks mean. It looks mad. It's ready to go. You know, and you can compare it to the CX30, even that CX5. That's where it was born, right there. The CX5, this front end. You know, and the. Uh, the let's see let me get this put this back into place i don't want to close the hood with this sticking out because i'm gonna forget about it and this if you ask me is made to look classy this is just classy you know i think uh, not that this isn't classy but this just to me it looks mean it's like we're ready to go get out of my way you know Anyway, let's look in the back over here. This one does not have the automagical uh, rear hatch. And this one comes with a, uh, as part of the package, you know, look, it has a uh, roadside assistance kit. Has, um, this is all weather, all weather floor mats. Comes with all weather floor mats. And as a matter of fact, uh, somebody put this, floor mat in in the back here and that's because you can't let salesmen do that kind of stuff they will you know get it wrong um, <laughs> um, this let me show you just hit that button this thing pulls forward you got this all-weather floor mat thing right here it has these tabs right there that's just a weird thing these tabs these tabs this is like a Velcro stuff, which Velcro to this. So you got Velcro going to the Velcro to going to the Velcro. Um, I don't know. I mean, you could just Velcro it to this, but I guess over time picking this up, it would uh, eventually wear this out. And this way, you know, you pull this off and it's just one time. Anyway, I thought that was kind of weird, but all weather floor mats in this thing. And you got all weather floor mats and then we got just the regular floor mats that came with the thing uh, sitting back here now let me tell you a secret <laughs> uh, these floor mats they come with the vehicle you know the regular floor mats uh, which uh, these have the it's got the little cx50 logo on there right there and, and they're just the carpet floor mats. They come with a vehicle, you know, it's uh, part of the vehicle. You get floor mats. Uh, sales uh, personnel or the sales department does not like technicians to put these floor mats in when they do the pre-delivery inspection. Why? Well, I mean, I guess it makes sense. You don't want people getting their feet, dirty feet all over the floor mat, you know. Um, but you know what they like to do? they'll put the floor mat in when the customer buys the vehicle the customer looks at the vehicle they test drive the vehicle they're like yeah i like it oh yeah let's go to finance you know <laughs> and afterwards when they're done it's like yeah i'm gonna get in my brand new vehicle the uh the uh, salesman comes out with this these floor mats 
opens them up, starts putting them in right in front of the customer. Like, you know what? Just for you, I threw in some floor mats. Just for you, for free. <laughs> you know what? They came with the vehicle. Um, yeah, I mean, that's my story, you know? Take it or leave it. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it, okay? <laughs> so, just so you know, just for my friends, so you know. Um, and, of course, this thing has a uh, full-size spare in here, so that's... Uh, that's cool um, yeah we can push these seats just push that little knob thing and we can push these seats forward something's still holding it all, all the seatbelt is on so okay there it goes and on this side I got this plant and the seat goes so that's cool I don't have to even go up there and I can push this and I can have more room here so that's a cool thing you know, I mean, did you know it did that? Um, so now you do. <laughs> uh, let's uh, look under the hood in this thing. Okay, this one, the same thing. It's got these nice little shock absorber things holding the, the hood up. And look at this. This is a uh, new design. This little uh, cover right here makes the engine look smaller. You know, <laughs> but it is the uh, 2.5 liter. She's a non turbolized flavor, but um, it's a it's a good engine, uh, and uh, it's the same design. It's Sky Active technology, same thing uh, Mazda's been going with for a while, and they work. You know, so why change it? It works, uh, and nothing nothing special under here. Uh, it's the same same old thing <clears throat> you know we did go with these uh these uh inverters or um uh, what do you call them it's an egr cooler you know so you got your egr system you got your cooler it cools the uh egr so i mean exhaust gas recirculation for better emissions um you know cool it why not because the uh, whole idea is to bring the temperature of the um, the combustion down, so that we don't, you know, have uh, NOx emissions. So why not? Uh, so it works. And there's uh, not too much more that I can say about this, or that I know of. You know, um, these things have you know tons and tons of features. You know, without a doubt, uh, this is not as fancy schmancy as the um as the cx90 of course you know but it does have the you know the same features it's got the uh, the seventh gen uh audio unit entertainment this one does not have navigation as you can see no navigation but that's easy to to deal with you know if you wanted navigation you just uh, have to buy the navigation sd card and right in here right back in here there's a there's a slot down here you can open that up and put your sd card in and then you got navigation look at this this is something that i would never liked of course this is just my opinion this looks nice you know, I mean, of course, if you had, I don't know, a piece of paper you wanted to stick into your glove box, you just shove it down in there or in your, to your center console. But it opens this way and it opens this way. I don't like that. I like the ones that open like this up. You open it up, then you grab something out of it. This one, you have got to open it this way and that way. And then I'm reaching over the top of this to try and get something out. And I never really liked it. And the... Um, the uh, EV or the uh, CX90 has the same thing. Um, this one, this uh, interior is, uh, you know, uh, more of a uh, regular general interior as compared to what that that uh, CX90 is. That CX90 is special. Um, not 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 to demean this vehicle. This vehicle is really nice, you know, and it does have a lot of room. It it, it does. It really does. Uh, and the CX-90, of course, you know, way more room. Um, let's look at the CX-30, because I got a story about this one. Okay, let's get in here. Look at this. What a mess. What is this mess right here? 
So the entire center console is taken out of the vehicle. Oh, it's locked. Unlock it. So here's the center console sitting in the back seat. Parts of the center console on the floor. And actually what's missing is the airbag control unit. So what's going on with this thing? So I should have made a video on this. Um, I didn't really think about it at the time. I wasn't sure if, you know, uh, what I was going to do, how I was going to get through this. Um, but I should have made a video. So um, here's the story. A uh, customer buys a brand new uh, 2024 CX-30 and it has 160 miles on it. Matter of fact, it was sold as a certified pre-owned even though we could have sold it brand new. I mean, it was a brand new vehicle. Um, I think it came, had come from an auction. So, you know, that's why it was sold as a certified pre-owned. Anyway, a week later, it comes back with a dead battery and the customer is like, it won't start. And I think they towed it in and I checked it out and sure enough the battery was dead so the vehicle sat on a lot long enough that it, it the the battery uh, needed to be replaced and it wasn't maintained on the lot and it wasn't warranty because you don't you can't warranty a battery on a vehicle that was just sold that had been sitting on a lot at least for Mazda the vehicle has to go three months and 3,000 miles after you buy it before that battery will be covered under warranty by Mazda so in other words the sales department paid for the battery but the worst part about it is once i got the new battery in well, i still had lights that you know codes that wouldn't clear had uh smart city brake support um had uh traction control abs uh front uh forward sensing camera um the uh lane keep assist or, or uh, lane departure warning the um uh, what is it? Blind spot detection had uh, codes in all of those and in the airbag control module had a code. And so now I'm like, where am I going to start with this? Uh, well, most of the codes for all the systems were basically yelling about the, the, uh, yaw rate sensor, G longitudinal sensor, G latitude sensor. Uh, it's not getting any of that information and needs that information in order for them to work properly. Uh, GPS needs that information too, uh, in order to work properly so uh, where are those sensors those sensors are inside the SAS control module or airbag control module and I had a code one code from the airbag control module said low voltage it's like how can I have low voltage I got a brand new battery in it and it would set low voltage so I did the diagnostic on it I checked the connectors and everything like that and uh, there was there was no low voltage it was getting the proper voltage it should be. It was getting the proper ground. And I drew, uh, checked the control area network going to it, make sure I had my proper voltages and stuff. And it was all good. So the only thing I could think of is it's got a bad uh, SAS control module. So like, I'm going to put a new SAS control module in it. That's on back order. Oh, really? Well, this is November right here. We're in November and it is on back order till mid to late january and this is the vehicle that the customer just bought you know so it's tore apart just like this you know everything's all tore apart you know diagnosing it and the uh the gm came up and he's like you know what we need to get this customer in something you know some vehicle or something like that well it Turns out of all the vehicles, brand new vehicles we had on the lot, there was only one that that SAS control module matched the vehicle that the customer was driving. And that was this vehicle. And uh, it's a long shot. And he's like, can we take that control module out of that brand new vehicle and put it into this new vehicle and get the customer on the road? And I told him, I don't know. Well, there's a lot of programming that needs to be done there's a lot of calibrations because you got those sensors in there and stuff and uh i don't know uh, i don't know if it's married to the vehicle i looked it up i couldn't find any you know there's nothing that says hey you can move this over but there's nothing that says don't move it over and that's pretty much what i told him he goes well let's move it over let's try it and i told him well the best thing that could happen is it'll work the worst thing that could happen is we could ruin the 
brand new module that we pulled out of this new vehicle. And he's like, well, let's do it. If we have to buy two modules, then we'll do that. So I did it. I moved it over. It actually calibrated. It programmed. They calibrated all the sensors. And everything worked. So the vehicle, a customer took their vehicle and they're on their way. And now this vehicle sits just like this until mid to late January when the part comes in. And then uh, we will be doing that and if you want let me know i can um make a video of uh, sticking that in and doing the programming and the calibrations um it really wasn't that that bad and of course we use the mdar system because this is a 2024 this right here is the glove box and as you can see it's a 2024 cx5 or cx30 might as well be a cx5 and it's got the same uh um cabin air filter because it has the the uh, bolster knee bolster airbags so that's why mazda changed their the way that the, those air those um uh cabin air filters come out <laughs> and i was ranting i was like why why mazda why well that's why the cx30 whenever they first came out i thought the same thing i thought why why cx30 why it looks like a cx5 you know and that's what i thought of course i never really looked at it this is definitely a smaller vehicle um it's uh more kind of narrowish smaller sportier looking um for sure um but uh definitely you know uh, uh less room this one's got the oh there it goes auto magical rear hatch um, but yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of room in here, you know, there really is. So it ain't as fancy as the other ones, but see, I can reach over here and I can move this forward if I want and this one too, you know, so pull it back and they can open this up. It does come with a spare. So uh, you got to say that nowadays because some vehicles, they don't come with spares. They have uh, uh, mobile, mobilizer, um, mobility kits. Yeah, that's what they call them. It's just some, some juice that you spray in your tire and air it up. You know, ain't going to help you. You got to blow out, you know, but these do come with spare, spare tires, spare tire, spare tire, you know, so that's a cool thing. So. Uh, let's get under the hood. Okay, let's see what this guy. Oh, this is heavy. It's heavy. See, now there's no, no struts. Let me set the camera down. Oh, Y'all can see nothing while I hook this up. Oh, yeah. I meant to set it down, not throw it down. So, here we go. Skyactiv-G Turbo. It's got the, the uh, turbocharged flavor engine and see how this cover it's a little bit bigger than the cx50 it makes the engine look bigger it's basically the same engine almost you know this one's a turbocharged flavor so it's got a lot more wires and tubes and stuff going on up here we've worked on these engines before it's the same as the cx9 it's a 2.5 liter turbocharged got the twin scroll whistler right there uh but yeah it's the same engine you know why because it works that's why as long as it works it works you know is it working for you tell me run on down in the comments tell me is it working for you you know because it works so let me know how it's not working for you and you know what let me know how it's working for you how, how's it going how's it going guys so um that is pretty much it there's our lineup right there <laughs> So, let me know how it goes. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'm just sitting here wasting some time, you know. And I would not rather be anywhere else than right here wasting some time with you. I'd rather spend the time with you. So, uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what uh, I should have told you. What, what did I miss? Uh, I missed a lot. I know I missed a lot. Let me know. What did I miss? What do you want to see? <laughs> let me know. Thank you 
so much for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.